Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be flying the CGS Hawk. It's a single seater with a Rotax 447 engine, three axis controls and flaps. The CGS Hawk is a family of high wing strut braced pusher configuration single or two seater in tandem ultralight aircraft. It's been around since 1982 and several thousands of these have been built. I'll tell you friends, this is truly a pilot's dream machine to fly. It's light and crisp on controls. And the great news is this company is still in business. It's been bought out by another firm, but you can still get parts and everything you need. And here's another cool feature I've added to the video. I'm using a Contour video camera with a built-in GPS data logger. I combined the video with a software product called Dashware.net. GoPro actually bought them out, so now it's free. Originally, when I bought it, it was 50 bucks. So here's the information I'm displaying for you in real time. On the left, that is ground speed, not airspeed, so don't get that confused. At the top, we've got the compass heading. On the right, we have the rate of climb indicator. On the right-hand side is the altimeter. It's showing feet above sea level. So our airport is about 800 feet above sea level. So 800 feet is really zero feet above the ground. So in this example, we're showing about 1,548 feet, but that's actually about 700 feet above the ground. Now let's do a walk around. First on the inside, you got the cockpit, very simple, nice gauges. You got airspeed and altimeter. You got your control stick, rudder pedals, comfortable seat. I'm 6'2", 195, fits me like a dream. Let's just take a minute here and do a walk around. You'll see it's just a very clean design. Has a 447 Rotac, you got flaps. Very crisp on the controls, very light. It's amazing. You have this engine here, 447, with a single carb, bean carburetor. They still make them. They don't make the engines anymore, but they're like a Volkswagen. You can always get parts for them. It's not a problem. Okay, let's get ready and fire this puppy up and take her for a flight. Okay, the tower is going to its clearance for takeoff. Here we go, we're coming up to full power. You actually rotate at about 50 miles an hour. Now I've already determined that I've got a crosswind from the left to right, so I'm holding left aileron to keep the wing down and right rudder to keep the nose straight. I'll rotate and then I'll simply just do a crab so I can parallel down the runway and counter the drift. In the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about engine failure. Right now, I can still land it on the runway or even the grass. Now, those options will end very quickly, but I'm always thinking about that in the back of my mind. The one thing I am not going to do is when I'm about at the end of the runway and the engine fails, is to turn around and try to make the runway. That's a good way to get yourself killed. <laughs> I'm still continuing to climb. I'm in the pattern on the downwind leg. I'm going to leave the airport by flying over the top center of it. That's the safest place for departing the airport. You notice my hands here, I'm trying to find the vents because it was getting a little warm inside. And I was looking for those and trying to fly at the same time. We'll be leaving the pattern here shortly and we're going to go out there and practice some stalls and even some wing overs, some gentle wing overs. Okay, here we go. We're going to bring the nose up. You'll notice that the speed will start to reduce. We're going to hold that up elevator, hold it, hold it, hold it. Come on, waiting for it to break. There it breaks, it's very gentle. It doesn't have any tendency to tip over on one wing or the other. Just really easy. Okay, here's another stall. We're just gonna hold it up, hold it up. You can kind of see the angle looking down across the wing there. Airspeed drops off, nose drops. Build up speed, flying again. On this next one, I'm pulling up the nose, but instead of doing a stall, I'm gonna hit right rudder and rotate the airplane to the opposite direction. Okay, here's another gentle wing over. Pull the nose up, hold it up there, and this time I'm gonna kick in left rudder. I probably only have about a quarter throttle. There she comes around, and head back the opposite direction. Okay, we're gonna do one more simple stall there before we head back to the airport. There's the angle. Drop the nose, pick up speed, flying again. As we head back to the airport, again, I'm gonna fly over the top center of the airport. As we approach the airport, again, I'm gonna fly over top center of it. 
probably between five and 700 feet above the ground. Okay, here's something fun to do. We're just gonna come in at uh, a high speed. We're not actually gonna land. We're just gonna do a low pass. Just skim across the runway, just a few feet off of it. Again, you'll notice I have a crosswind from the left to right. Again, you'll notice that the nose is not pointing straight down that runway, is it? It's crabbed to the left to compensate for the drift of the crosswind. Looks like I'm about 100 feet off the ground now, approaching the runway. We're just gonna do a high speed low pass, maybe a couple of feet off the ground, just a lot of fun. As we approach low to the ground here, you'll pick up some turbulence off of those other hangars on the left-hand side. It's not a problem. We've got plenty of speed, obviously. We have plenty of control of the aircraft and just don't smack the ground. Thank you very much. All right, as we approach the end of the runway, I'm gonna pull up the nose and convert that extra airspeed into altitude as we climb higher. And also when flying within an airport, you always wanna be looking out for that other aircraft. Anyway, here on this next maneuver, we're gonna do a, a landing with a full stop. Again, we have the same thing on this approach to a landing. We've got a crosswind from the left to right. I'm just gonna use a simple crab to compensate for the drift until I get pretty close to the end of the runway. As I'm coming in, I got plenty of speed, actually more than I need, but that's okay. We've got a 3,000 foot runway. It's not that big of a deal. As I get closer to the ground, I'm gonna go into a slip. That means holding left aileron down. I'm gonna be holding right rudder and I'm gonna bleed off the speed because I'm going pretty fast right now and just slowly let it go down, 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 down. Here we go. As I touch the ground, there we go. I'm holding more left aileron now to keep that wing down and I'm also holding up elevator. And the slower I go, the more aileron left I'm putting in to compensate for that crosswind that we have. Okay, coming up on this next scene here in just a minute, I'll be outside of the plane and demonstrate how slow you can actually land this aircraft. There's only about a 10 mile an hour wind, just really nice and slow, look at that. Well, that landing demonstration, it looks like my buddy forgot to release the parking brake of all things. Man, that'll make some noise. Actually, folks, I'm just kidding. I just put that in for sound effects. In this video, I was flying the Hawk Classic, but it comes in many different configurations, including a conventional type setup or a tail dragger. A good place to look for an ultralight is barnstormers.com on the internet. Another good place maybe to find an ultralight is one of the flying clubs that might be in your area. Just look up the US UA and see if there's a flying club nearby. GoPro bought out dashware.net. That's where you can go to get the software to make those cool live data effects. I used a contour video camera that has a built-in GPS data logger, but you don't have to have that. You can buy a separate GPS data logger and sync it to the video to make these really cool effects. If you'd like more information on the Hawk, they still make them today. You can go to cgsaviation.com. I hope you enjoyed that video. And remember, I've got plenty of other flight videos on my channel. So you guys take care and have a great day. And we'll see you in the air next time.